Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a very interesting sample from Kamianka in Yakutia. This individual lived in, um, in an area that's so far north and so extreme in climate, it's actually a little bit north of the Arctic Circle. It's um, six miles north of the Arctic Circle in terms of the location. Uh, so this is a place where they experience the polar night and then the polar day. Uh, this is a place where at least one one day in a year the sun doesn't even rise above the horizon. Very uh, interesting, very far northern place. And this is a part of the Yimiyahtak culture of eastern Siberia. This is a culture that's ancestral to such people as Yukuts, Yevyanks, and even to uh, certain Native Americans in Canada. This is her predicted phenotype with minus Shakot tool. As you can see, uh, the likelihood of her having anything either other than dark brown eyes is very, very slim. So she definitely had dark brown eyes, uh, snub-shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, my eye shape predictor for her is giving an uh, Oceanian actually eye shape, which is also sort of uh, Oceanian eye shape. You will still see the epicanthic fold and the, the um, uh, typical East Asian kind of features. And she's predicted to have straight hair at a likelihood of 97%. And it's a very good prediction because uh, this file is actually very high quality. Uh, she has two derived variants in EDAR, which means two, a two East Asian EDAR variants, shell-shaped ancestors, and other Asiatic traits. She's heterozygous for BH1, blue Y haplotype 1, but she doesn't have blue Y haplotype 2 or 3 or 4. She has two derived variants in Keto G's variation that has to do with uh, skin tone, so she definitely has light Eurasian skin tone. However, she does not have the SLC24A5 or SLC45A2 uh, mutations for lighter skin pigmentation, which typically uh, correspond to light skin in Europeans. So her light skin tone is mostly attributable to her genotype in Keto G and ASIP, uh, which that's typically how it goes. Europeans, in Europeans, the light skin is more a matter of SLC 45A2 and SLC 24A5, whereas for non-European Eurasians, it's mostly about Keto G and ASIP, although for Europeans, Keto G also matters. It's, um, it's only the single most impactful variation for uh, skin color that exists. Uh, and she doesn't have any light color variants in TIRP1, and she does have some light color variants in IRF4, SLC 24A4, and tier genes. Out of modern ethnicities, she is most similar to Yuka Gears and Ngana Sans, which are very mysterious. They have some linguistic similarities to Uralic languages. Uh, they also have linguistic similarities to Turkic and even Native American languages. I'm not really sure what branch to classify them as, but it's, you know, they're kind of Arctic Siberians basically. And out of uh, closest ancient groups, she's most similar to Yimiyahtah, which is exactly what she is. Uh, she is Yimiyahtah, that's that's what she is, followed by Krasnoyarsk, Krasnoyarsk Bronze Age, which is actually proto-Uralic individual. Krasnoyarsk Bronze Age is uh, the proto-Uralic um, genome that's found in every in every Uralic-speaking nation, from Finnish people to Estonians to uh, Mansi and Hans. Less so in Finnish and Estonians, more so in Mansi and Hans. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13, and you know what, I find it interesting that she's scoring such a little amount of uh, Amerindian. She doesn't have much Amerindian admixture, which I think is explained by her lack of ancient North Eurasian admixture. This is a very East Asian-like individual, so this individual is uh, very Siberian or East Asian. She's actually scoring 9% East Asian with the Oracle, um, and this individual does not have much uh, ancient North Eurasian admixture. And with the Oracle, she's closest to Yevents and Yevenks, which are uh, the same thing. They are uh, basically Yevenk people who live in uh, the north of Siberia. And I mean, this is what she scores with MDLPK23B. You can see she's scoring mostly East Siberian, and she's not scoring a lot of ancient North Eurasian components. For example, the ancestral Altai component here with the MDLPK23B is kind of the component that most ancient North Eurasian individuals score. And this is, but she's not scoring any of it. She's only scoring 2.5% ancestral Altaic. She's not very uh, ANE in terms of admixture, and uh, she's very much modern Siberian, very much modern kind of extreme uh, East Eurasian in terms of autosomal DNA. But then again, does she have some 
um, European hunter gatherer or ancient North Eurasian admixture? I think the answer is yes. I think she does have European hunter gatherer admixture because with multiple calculators, starting from Eurasian's K13, which was in the very beginning, she was scoring some Baltic, and here she is scoring 1.37% European hunter gatherer. She does have. It seems that she does have European hunter gatherer or ancient North Eurasian. Whoever this admixture is coming from, it's probably from Eastern hunter gatherers. She does have Eastern hunter gatherer admixture in that case, uh, because once again, repeatedly with multiple calculators, she's scoring a, a little bit of European hunter gatherer uh, components. This is what she scores with ancient Eurasia K6. You can see she's she's overwhelmingly East Asian in ancestry, but she does have a little bit of ancestral North Eurasian and even some European hunter-gatherer admixture. Yes, she even has uh, European hunter-gatherer admixture, which means that she probably has EHG uh, EHG descent, not just ancient North Eurasian, but directly from EHG. Uh, she has some EHG admixture, and she's closest to Nganasan, followed by Mongols. And she's actually getting one of those mixture of Nganasan plus various um, various Eskimos or Paliyars which are in uh, the south of India. And with Gedrosia K3 we see that this is number one, it's a very modern individual who has a lot of modern drift. And number two we see it's a very East Eurasian individual. This is somebody who, who is 95.5% East Eurasian. Um, if the, There is the word, you know, there is the racial word that starts with a Mong and ends with the uh, oid. I don't want to pronounce it here on YouTube, but if uh, this word would apply to her perfectly because that's exactly what she is. Now we're going to be using my genome analyzer tool to um, sort of see her traits. Let's choose the file and she is this, right? It's gonna take a while for the thing to load because it's a big file. It's a very high quality file. So she is a gene comes Valmet variation, uh, meaning Valmet genotype intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels. She has one warrior and one warrior allele uh, in comes variation. Uh, so uh, T TG and MAOAs are RS6323, which is once again one warrior, one warrior allele, but this is a different gene. This is MAOA. Uh, so where when COMT is located on the 22nd chromosome pair, MAOA is located on the X chromosome. Completely different location, completely different genes, but the enzyme, the MAOA enzyme and the COMT enzyme, they both do the same thing. They both are responsible for the reuptake of dopamine, for regulation of dopamine reuptake, actually. Uh, GG here, so not any no-go learner variants in DRD2 profilensin pro variation. Typical stuff. Uh, AG here, which is implicated in a slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly slightly increased likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, okay, AG in TAC1, very interesting. Okay, so she does have one of the, um, in TAC1, typical humans have GG or A2A2, but she is a 1A2. She has 1A1 allele, she has 1A allele here, uh, which is implicated in a slightly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly increased likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, and ADHD. Uh, she's got AC genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is once again implicated in a slightly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly increased, increased likelihood of alcoholism. Uh, we're going to skip all of this. doesn't matter all that much here. Uh, typical gene type for most humans, one short, short form 5-HTTLPR and another short form 5-HTTLPR. So most humans have short form 5-HTTLPR, um, not me. I have long form, but most humans have short form, and short form leads to slightly increased uh, likelihood of depression and problems with um, serotonin transmit transportation. For me, that's not the case, but for her and for most of you guys watching the video, that's the case. Uh, for lactose persistence, doesn't have this variation, doesn't have this variation. She does not have any derived variants for European lactose persistence. Um, not not surprising because she's not a European and she's got AA in this OXTR variation which means two sociopath variants for reduced, reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy and here TT once again lower empathy levels and GG here once again two variants for lower empathy so uh, OX, based on her genotype in OXTR uh, definitely has some sociopathic tendencies, sociopathic traits. Let's look at diabetes. Okay wow she has AA genotype here 
this is the main variation for type 1 diabetes, the most important variation for type 1 diabetes. And this is quite a concerning result because typically you would have the opposite of that. But this leads to a significant increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes, sevenfold increase in the risk. So it's very possible and it's very probable that she had type 1 diabetes just based on the genotype alone. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk about all of this. Uh, you at the end of the day, you can check all of that by just going on my website and uploading her file there because the link to download the file will be in the link. The link to download will be in the description. You can literally get you can literally generate all of this for yourself. I don't, I don't want to spend time and go over this. Um, does not have any of the hemochromatosis mutations. I'm just going to cover all of the important variants. And for Alzheimer's, uh, TC here, wow, okay, so this is one risk allele for Alzheimer's in the APOE variation, which leads to slightly higher odds of Alzheimer's than average. Uh, and here she does not have any APOE2 alleles. Okay, so she probably has a slightly higher risk of Alzheimer's than, for example, me or you, but um, ju judging from this, we can't really say that she definitely has Alzheimer's. Uh, what about the other variants? Slightly decreased risk. Lower risk, average. So, I mean, probably did not have Alzheimer's just based on this genotype here. For myopia, mm, AA here, which is the typical genotype, and once again, it leads to a slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. AA here, which leads to a decrease in the risk of myopia, and AT here, which leads to a decrease in the risk of myopia once again. Probably did not have myopia. And for miscellaneous section, uh, a very, <laughs> well, this, I'm not gonna voice these two but you can read what's on the screen uh, very good once again very good uh, tt here smaller cranium and lower iq tt here once again lower iq uh, gg here which means eight points higher iq than individuals with the aa genotype and uh, ct here which means <coughs> uh, mix of muscle types likely more sprinter than endurance athlete and at here which means one fat gene variant in FTOs, uh, RS9939609. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you can download this genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Check out my website. Uh, there is also on my website, there is also going to be a forum section pretty soon. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get it to work. <laughs> it's pretty difficult because I'm, I'm coding the forums by myself. Uh, but... Um, you know, maybe one day it's going to work. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.